Hi everyone, welcome to another resource wrap. This is resource wrap number two, designed to give you some suggestions of things that might be helpful for you to use, uh, put your mind and heart to in this strange time we're in. So something to listen to, something to read, and something to do. I'm not a big podcast listener, but I have made an exception recently and have started listening to something called the Salt Podcast, which is produced by our very own Jenny Salt from our 9.30am congregation. If you want to try to get your head around what kind of podcast this is, think Conversations with Richard Feidler on ABC Radio, except a Christian version. I think that's basically what the Salt Podcast is. Jenny sits down and interviews someone, uh, maybe someone you've heard of before, maybe someone you haven't, and talks to them about their life and what it means to follow Jesus. And I found it a fascinating little podcast to listen to. Um, there are about 30 to 40 minute interviews each. Incredibly encouraging to hear someone else's story and the way Jenny kind of warmly interacts with them and teases out some of the things that they are able to share. So the SALT podcast, it's part of the Eternity Podcast Network. And for the record, if you Google Eternity Podcast Network, you might find some other very interesting podcasts that are part of the network as well. But the SALT podcast, a good thing to listen to. I've tried to think of what would be a helpful book to recommend to you for this period that we're in. And I've chosen to mention to you today this book. It's called Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life by Donald S. Whitney. You know, if you're something with an initial and then another name, you're probably American, you'd be right in this case, Donald S. Whitney, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life. It's a book that covers a lot of the kind of common Christian disciplines that you might hear people talk about, and maybe some that you don't hear people talk about quite so much. So it's got chapters on reading the Bible, taking the Bible in, on prayer, on worship, on service, on stewardship, on solitude, uh, on fasting, on journaling, and there are a few others in there as well. And I think this would be a helpful book for those of you who do have some good habits of spiritual discipline, but who sometimes need a reminder of why it's important. Um, I think it would be a helpful book for those that are perhaps struggling to get into good spiritual disciplines and would value someone just talking through what some of those disciplines are and how they might be helpful. And I also think it would be a great book for someone to read who's really heard Christians talk about Christian disciplines but have never really worked out for themselves what that would look like. So if you're looking for an introduction to some of those Christian disciplines, this is a great little book. And I think it's the sort of book where you could dip in to a chapter here or a chapter there depending on what interested you as well. Something to do. Um, I wanted to encourage you today to think about how you could widen the circle. And what I mean by that is how can you take what we're doing together as a church and open it up to perhaps a few other people in your life. One of the things that's been really encouraging for me and the other pastors over these past few weeks is seeing how that's already been happening. How people uh, have invited others to join in our online services. How people have invited others into their home groups. Um, in these ways, our brothers and sisters have been widening the circle. And we've been thrilled to see that, say, in our online Sunday services, we've probably got more people tuning in than we would regularly have on a Sunday in our church building. That's a wonderful thing that God's doing uh, through this interesting time. And I want to encourage you to think about how you could do that, and especially this week in the lead up to Easter. Um, next Sunday and next Friday, as you're aware, our Easter services will be online. And I reckon it's never been easier for you to invite someone else to participate in our church services. All you would have to do would be to cut and paste the link into an email or a message on your phone and say, hey, here's our Easter services online. Why don't you check them out? Uh, can I encourage you to think about this week who you could do that for, who you could do that with, uh, to widen the circle of people who are hearing the gospel at this time of year in 